I want to introduce my good friend and colleague, uh, philosopher uh, David Chalmers, who will chair the first session. Dave. Thanks. OK, uh, thanks, Stu. And uh, welcome, everyone, to the War of the Worldviews. Or as someone said, and in the spirit of nonviolence, maybe it should be it's the tennis match of the, uh, of the worldviews. I'm really the, uh, the food fight of the worldviews, the, uh, the dance of the worldviews, the peace treaty of the worldviews. We'll see, uh, we'll see uh, how it goes. Uh, we've got a great session lined up. Um, the, you know, the objective versus the subjective. The first person versus the third person. The brain versus the mind. You know, there's reductionism versus holism. The individual versus the social. You know, Eastern approaches to the mind versus Western approaches. In all of these, you know, we've, this conference over the last 20 years has tried to be uh, you know, pluralistic and let a thousand flowers bloom. Partly in the spirit that when it comes to the study of consciousness, we're still, you know, it's early days, there's still so much that we don't understand, we don't know where the answers are going to come from. And so we should be open to, our, to ideas from all kinds of quarters. At the same time, we've always tried to keep things anchored very much in science, in rigorous analytic approaches, um, so that we can really, you know, you can really get the, uh, the benefit that, uh, that rigorous scientific thinking brings to, uh, to thinking about all kinds of topics in understanding the world. So I guess, you know, we're letting a thousand flowers bloom in a, uh, but in a, in a rigorous and demanding garden is what we're trying to do. Or as people like to say, you know, keep your, uh, keep your mind open, but not so open that your brain falls out. <laughs> that captures, I think, something of the spirit of what we're up to here. So the, the dichotomy for, for today is one that's been on many people's minds lately, uh, dichotomy of science versus spirituality. So this is, I guess, a key dichotomy at the heart of the interests of many people that come to a conference like this one. It's still, a, you know, it's a, it's a tricky and problematic um, dichotomy, partly because, you know, these words science, spirituality mean so many things to so many different people. It's one that makes it particularly difficult to keep up the balance between pluralism and rigor. I mean, there are many points you can occupy on the, uh, on the spectrum of science and spirituality. When I was talking to our speakers before, I said, OK, well, here's how it's going to go. It's going to go uh, uh, spirit, science, spirit, science. To which they all said, I'm sorry, I'm spirit and science. <laughs> so each of us is, uh, is you know, some, part, some part science and some part spirituality. But I guess what we find is that the, uh, the, you know, the balance uh, and the emphasis between the two changes from uh, from person to person. And reasonable people can differ over exactly what point to occupy on the spectrum and how much emphasis to, uh, to give to one and to the other. Indeed, reasonable people do differ in, uh, in, you know, in organizing a conference like this one. We always have robust and, uh, robust and hearty debates about exactly uh, what the balance between um, you know, science and spirit, first person, third person, and so on, uh, so on should be. But, um, you know, but, this, uh, but this session, I think, is going to be a, a good way to, you know, to illustrate different points on that spectrum and to, to illustrate different approaches to, the, recon to the, uh, the relationship between science and spirituality. Now, as I said, there are many different versions of science and spirituality, each of them. You know, given an appropriately extreme construal of each, it's going to look like there's no reconciliation in sight. Given an appropriately moderate construal of each, it's going to be obvious there's, a, there's not going to be even much of a prima facie clash given certain, you know, in between um, construals of each, then there's going to be at least interesting questions about the relationship. So given an extreme construal, I guess, of each, you know, on an extreme construal of science, science is something like reductionism. Everything is reducible to, you know, a bunch of particles in the void. On an extreme construal of uh, spirituality, Spirituality is theism, you know, the existence of an irreducible and primitive God who 
created the universe. I think, you know, so construed. I think it's reasonably clear there's not much of a uh, reconciliation to be had between, uh, between science and spirituality. Reductionism, by definition, is going to be incompatible with the existence of these primitive entities, which, such as a god, which are irreducible to you know, particles in the void. But that's an extreme construal of each. On the other hand, if you take a moderate construal of each, well, what science? Maybe science just comes down to empiricism, a rigorous analytic approach grounded in you know, the data of observation and, and measurement and rigorous reasoning. And what's spirituality? Well, on a moderate reading, you know, subjectivity, taking the, uh, the subjective seriously and the data of subjective consciousness seriously. So construed, I think it's obvious then that science and spirituality are compatible. Empiricism versus subjectivity. Indeed, you can see what this conference has been up to for the last 20 years is all about you know, how to move forward and taking an empirically grounded approach to the, uh, to the study of subjectivity. And I think that's a battle which by now has been more or less, uh, more or less won. You can, be, you can be empirical and scientific in that sense, and you can take consciousness seriously. So some way, but in some ways, you know, the interesting clashes here are in the, uh, in the, uh, the middle ground. You know, I mean, reductionism versus subjectivity. That's an interesting one. Are those, are those compatible or not? Many people think, think no, or empiricism versus theism. Um, that's one that's, uh, that's up for grabs. Or more generally, there are notions like, uh, you know, construe science as taking a worldview very much grounded in the deliverances of uh, contemporary science. You know, um, um, theories of physics, such as quantum mechanics and relativity, theories in biology, such as evolution, and construe spirituality as involving something like meaning and purpose. Well, are the deliveries of contemporary science consistent with something like meaning and purpose in the world? That's something over which there's clearly a debate to be had. More generally, you know, start with contemporary science, and now what do we take as our contrast class for spirituality? Well, subjectivity, starting at the weak end of the spectrum. Subjectivity, but then moving along to meaning, to value, is contemporary science consistent with the existence of a value-laden universe? To purpose, to spirit, to transcendence, to immortality, to God. You know, as you go along this spectrum, different people are going to drop off at different places. I certainly drop off that, uh, drop off that spectrum at, uh, at some point, but uh, you know, some people may go with it all the, all the way. I think you know, much of the interest here is going to be in exactly what kinds of compatibility and reconciliation are possible, to what extent, and but at what point one ought to get off the boat. And I think you know, different people in this group are going to get off the boat at a, a different point. So what we're going to be trying to do here is to really you know, have a conversation, keeping one eye, you know, one eye on ecumenicism and integration. You know, what can we integrate with what? But you know, also one eye on the, on the robust and the, and healthy view of possible incompatibilities here, and you know the point where you want to get off the boat, the point where one becomes so open-minded that uh, you know that some people will hold that one's brain is uh, is falling out. And I think we're going to have a a uh, robust and and uh, and lively set of opinions on the panel here. So what we have today, I guess everyone here has a background in science, and in some sense we got a uh, you know a medic, uh, two physicists, and a psychologist. Although uh, each of them um, has moved in different ways into uh, taking seriously questions about uh, spirituality, about consciousness, and uh, drawing connections from those things to, uh, to the science. So our, uh, our first speaker today, what we're going to do, we're going to have 20-minute uh, uh, presentations by each of the speaker, saving questions till afterwards, which is going to hopefully leave, leave time for a... Uh, lively and healthy discussion, um, a good amount of time for a lively and healthy discussion at the, uh, at the end of it.